All right. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to one more session of your WOC students. Right. This is your Vani ma'am back again with one more session. That's nothing but case bead questions. So basically, this is the most requested video. You've all asked me, ma'am, please do case bead questions for term one. So today I'm going to show you how actually we have to answer a case bead question. Let's go slowly. Let's read the paragraph. Let's see how to answer the questions. All right. All set. Ready, students. My request is almost in WOC. I have done 1600 plus videos. How many students? 1600 plus videos are done. So please see that you're sharing these videos. I have done 100 percent syllabus of your grade 12th. All right. Of 11th. All right. 10th few chapters also I have sent. So please share the videos so that your term one examination goes well. Shall we? Let us go into the session. Let's read the question and see how to answer it. So basically students case beat question means first of all there is a paragraph given. Okay. So they may pick up from any of the chapter of the term one. All right. They'll give you a particular paragraph. Your first important thing is read it carefully. And important, underline the sentences which are very important, right? How to know that? See, there is certain thing called general information. There is certain thing called important information because below the paragraph, there are five questions given to you like this. Question number one, question number two, question number three, like that they'll give you. So, let us first go through the paragraph and underline. Let's read. Ozone is an allotropic form of oxygen. Okay, so ozone itself is an allotrope of oxygen. It is too reactive to remain for long in the atmosphere at sea level. All right, that's a general information. At a height of about uh, 20 kilometers, it is formed from the atmospheric oxygen in the presence of sunlight. So at a height of about 20 kilometers, it is formed from atmospheric oxygen. Okay. And that too, what is required? Sunlight is required for that. Okay. Done. This ozone layer protects the Earth's atmosphere, the Earth's surface, from an excessive concentration of ultraviolet rays. Obviously. So, ozone layer protects from ultraviolet radiations. All right. The formation of ozone from oxygen is an endothermic process. All right. This is one word. Please mark it. So, whenever ozone has to form from oxygen, the energy is absorbed It seems All right. Then they have given if concentration of ozone greater than 10% are required, a battery of ozonizers can be used and pure ozone can be condensed in a vessel surrounded by liquid oxygen so basically they are saying if you want ozone of more than 10 percent purity right what is the procedure you are going to use an ozonizer all right His, they, this is an ncrt paragraph so they are going to use an ozonizer where you have a particular vessel which is condensed and surrounded by liquid oxygen okay right so that is one thing remember so, when ozone reacts with potassium iodide, okay, potassium iodide, okay, in the solution, buffered with borate buffer, iodine is liberated. That means iodide, potassium iodide, minus 1 oxidation state to 0. There is gain of electrons. So, sorry, so 1 electron, no? So, there is loss of electrons. I am sorry, loss of electron is there, which is happening. <clears throat> okay liberated and can be titrated against a standard solution of thiosulfate okay ozone layer is probably posed by the use of freons which are used in aerosol sprays and refrigerators so they have given a use also so you have gotten complete understanding of ozone how it is formed how it is formed how it is prepared in the lab what are the properties whether it is oxidizing or reducing in nature because minus 1 to 0. So, basically, there is your process is going below the oxidation number means it's trying to lose the electrons means it's going to the lower oxidation state from minus 1 it is going to 0. Correct? All right. Let us see all those processes what actually is happening. Let's read the question. All right. Let's see. When slow dry stream of oxygen is passed through a silent electric discharge, Conversion of oxygen to ozone 10% 10, 10 occurs. The product formed is. 
so you are able to see students here they have marked one paragraph there they have given ozone greater than 10 percent so already you would have studied in your ncrt how to prepare ozone we very well know oxygen atom gets converted to ozone molecule right when you use a silent electric discharge when you balance it three oxygen atoms and two ozone molecules this is what is the thing so during this process whatever ozone we get so that's nothing but your 10 percent about 10 percent this ozone is called ozonized oxygen what is it students it is called ozonized oxygen so what did they ask me the product formed during silent electric discharge is what it's nothing but ozonized oxygen easy next question let's see this pure ozone is which color pale blue dark blue violet black solid yes students it is all of these if you're seeing this is the color of ozone all of these is the correct answer yes the color also they're going to ask you remember next important thing ozone is thermodynamically unstable its decomposition into oxygen results in what all right they have given different conditions ozone is thermodynamically unstable why so let's see first of all we very well know ozone molecule it breaks up into oxygen correct if i have to balance right two of oxygens and three of ozone, right so two of ozone molecules and three of oxygen is what is a thing right now understand carefully yes they said this ozone is thermodynamically unstable so when they say thermodynamically unstable the formula what we should do delta g is equal to delta h minus t delta s now observe during this process the reaction is highly exothermic it is exothermic in nature all right so when the reaction is exothermic that means the enthalpy is exothermic the heat content energy is released when this is negative delta g also is negative yes now now see students these two are negative perfect now let's see this formula when i see this formula what is happening two moles of ozone are getting converted to three moles of oxygen two is to three now what is happening students what is happening the entropy of the system so basically there is change in that change in entropy the number of moles two is getting converted to three so is the entropy of the system positive yes it is positive in nature entropy is positive so automatically i am going to write entropy is positive that there is a change in the number of moles correct change in entropy okay from two it is getting converted to three correct all right now check students so basically delta g if i have to take consider everything delta g is negative my delta h is negative the entropy is positive so the is the reaction not spontaneous yes the reaction is spontaneous so obviously when the reaction when you see that the uh, particular thing is spontaneous is it stable it is very quickly it becomes unstable very fast the products are formed and with so much of energy so what is happening during this process students what is happening during this process basically if i have to say both there is liberation of heat also there is increase in enthalpy also see here from two moles to three moles so basically both the options b and c are sorry a and b are right all right got it now let's see one more question length of oxygen oxygen bond in ozone so structure so what is oxygen bond when you see it's nothing but 128 picometer yes for oxygen is 121 picometer for ozone it is 128 picometer so done so structures are very important so please learn the structures now let's see one more question Oxi ozone oxidizes lead sulfide to what just now we have seen no potassium iodide that is minus one to iodine zero decrease in the oxidation number it's going to the positive side yes so what we'll do which one will do this students it is oxidizing which will do oxidizing agent only will do that so ozone molecule when i see it gets converted to oxygen plus nascent oxygen so yeah 
So now let's see. Because of this nascent oxygen, ozone acts as an oxidizing agent. See here. So I am taking lead sulfide. You are adding ozone to this. What will it convert here? It is Pb plus 2. It is minus 2. What will ozone do? <clears throat> that nascent oxygen, it will convert sulfide to sulfate. PbSO4. See here. Here it is minus 2. All right. Here it's getting converted to sulfate. And along with this, oxygen is also released. So if I have to balance, um, this will become 4. This will become 4. Let us see 4 threes are 12. 4 to the 8 plus 4 to Correct. So it's a process of converting, process of converting lead sulfide to sulfate, which is answer lead sulfate. Iodide to iodine, sulfide to sulfate. Easy. So basically complete NCRT. Every line of NCRT you should remember. Then only it's easy. Okay. Chal. Now next question. Let us see the next question students. So basically there's a big question. Let's read this. So what did they give me? Boiling point. Boiling point or freezing point. That's nothing but your colligative property. It is from your solutions chapter. Correct. It's from your solutions chapter. So what is it given? Boiling point of freezing point of a liquid solution would be affected by the dissolved solids in liquid phase. Okay. So, all the colligative property will depend upon the number of dissolved solids in the liquid phase, not of the nature. Right. A soluble solid in solution has the effect of raising the boiling point and depression in freezing point. Obviously. It, so, the colligative property depends upon the Number of solute particles, obviously, correct? So, both will affect? Yes, they will affect, accepted. The addition of non-volatile solute or substances to a solvent decreases the vapor pressure and to the added solute particles are affect the formation of pure solvent. Yes, solute particles always affect the colligative properties, all the four, correct? And if you add non-volatile solute like this, automatically the vapor pressure decreases. Vapor pressure of the solvent decreases. Accepted. Underline. Then, uh, according to many researchers, the decrease in the freezing point is directly correlated to the concentration of solutes. Yes, that is what we were discussing about. Then, this phenomena is expressed as freezing point depression and it is useful for several applications. Okay, like freeze concentration high quality foot concentration method where water is removed from by forming ice crystals so that's one of the application then this is done by cooling the liquid foot below the freezing point of the solution this is one more application this so basically they are giving us the different applications of freezing all right and how what happens when you add a non volatile solute then they said the freezing point depression is ref referred to as colligative property and it's proportional to its molar concentration of the solution. So basically the freezing point depression whatever is there if I have to take delta Tf is equal to I into Kf by Kf into M that is what they say. So these are the physical characteristics of solutions that depend on the identity of the solvent and concentration of solute. So, the physical properties that is your nothing but your colligative property, they depend upon the concentration of the solute, not on the nature and they depend on the means uh, identity of the solvent. Oh, right. So, basically these are the physical characteristics there. Let us see the questions what they gave. So, first question. When a non-volatile solute is added to pure water, it will. See here students, just now we have seen non volatile solute decreases the vapor pressure isn't it obviously now non volatile sol solid is heated with a solvent this is your solute that is non volatile this is your solvent what will happen students what will happen obviously the boiling point or the vapor pressure is reduced so boiling point will become see boiling point is 100 degrees so, when you add a non-volatile solute, the boiling point will become less or it will boil less than yes below. And what will happen? It will freeze. Freezing point also will be greater than 
Correct. So just now we said non-volatile solute means vapor pressure is reduced. Right. So automatically vapor pressure is reduced means with a less temperature only. Yes. All right. So basically the option is B. Yeah. Next option. Next question. Let's see. So next. Uh, colligative properties are what? So just now we said colligative properties like relative lowering of vapor pressure, depression in boiling point, depression in freezing point and osmotic pressure. All these are going to be or they will depend upon what students? It's going to depend only on the identity. Yes, depend only on the identity of the solvent and concentration of the solute so it is not it will only depend upon concentration of the solution never on solute identity i don't want i'll not talk about anything about the solute identity what is the solute whether it is this but i will concentrate on number of moles yes so identity of the solvent and concentration of the solute so option d is right easy Got it. so directly depends upon concentration of solute and identity of identity of solvent correct now all right so this is what is the option next question let's see assume three samples of juices a b c have have glucose as the only sugar present in them so a sample b sample and c sample the concentration molar concentrations are given the freezing point will be highest for which juice or which a will be having which has 0.1 mole, B 5.5 mole, C 0.2 mole. So basically, remember one thing: freezing point. Okay. So let us write the formula, students. Freezing point is equal to I into Kf into M. All right. Now check I into molar concentration of molality. What is it, students? It's nothing but concentration. Correct. It is nothing but concentration. So, delta Tf is directly related to the concentration. All right. Now, check. If delta Tf increases, concentration also increases. All right. Now, option two. If delta Tf increases, freezing point decreases. Oh, correct? No? According to the relation, if it increases, freezing point, that's nothing but your uh, the basic freezing point, normal freezing point, if I have to take freezing point, the ebulloscopic, that is ebulloscopic constant. So, the normal, this is change in freezing point. The normal freezing point decreases. Correct, no students? Because this is the change delta Tf. So, that's the change between the depression in freezing point and the original freezing point. So, if I see according to this, this will increase, this will decrease. So now you only tell me, you only tell me, so what did they say, which will have the freezing point will be highest for what? So you only see among everything, 0 0.1 molar concentration, see here, both are dependent here. This is increasing, this is increasing. So 0 0.1 molar would have the least freezing point because 0 0.1 molar is more in concentration. Yes, here these are all diluted. So, more concentration means freezing point will be maximum for this. Easy? Oh, next one. The ID identify which of the following is a colligative property. All right. So, we said colligative properties are of four types. One is the relative lowering of vapor pressure, elevation in boiling point, depression in freezing point and osmotic pressure. So, among this freezing point not there, boiling point, these are all general factors. So, osmotic pressure is a colligative property. Right. So, nice, nice, nice. So, thank you so much, students. Yes, we have done case B questions. I'll be coming up with more and more videos. Thank you. Please share the video. Please share the video. All right. So, I'll come back with one more video. Thank you so much. Thank you.